tonight. Find out how our orientation leaders are making an impact. Plus, more roadway construction ahead. Stay tuned. Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello, and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News for July 11, 2012. I'm Brittany Harris. And I'm Deartra Montgomery. Thank you for joining us this evening. The city of Troy will soon see the start of a major roadway project designed to help increase the flow of traffic through town. Judson Gardner has the details. ATRIP is an Alabama Department and Transportation federal aid highway program that funds up to... During impact orientation, current Troy University students serve as leaders to incoming freshmen and transfer students. ATRIP is an Alabama Department and Transportation federal aid highway program that funds up to 80% of important roadway construction. And Tuesday night at Troy's City Council meeting, the council approved the next round of funding for Troy's roadways. The council approved tonight us accepting the $1.3 million for the Montgomery Street, uh, Madison Avenue, down by the front porch, and then down South Three Night Street. Some may feel that recently there is constantly a major Troy roadway getting resurfaced. And this is something that the mayor is proud of. But not all of the funding for these resurfacing projects has come from ATRIP. We've been real fortunate, and I was complimenting tonight at our meeting, our utility department. They were able to take a grant that we received from the Department of Economic and Community Affairs. They took a grant we received from EDA for road, I mean for water and sewer work. And where we cut the roads, they came back in and resurfaced the entire streets under that act. And with some of the extra money the city has saved, the ATRIP funding will allow Troy to take its granted amount of money further down the road and pave more streets in the near future. We're planning a major resurfacing project. Uh, I can't, you know, it's, it's streets all over the community. It, we've got an evaluation system that's in place. Uh, I don't have the map, you know, available to me right now but uh, many, most of the streets that are in a bad state of repair should be resurfaced under this project. Judson Garner, Troy Trojan Vision News. The next round of funding will come in November. Many of the current roadway projects are expected to be completed by the summer. Every summer, incoming freshmen learn about the campus during the impact orientation sessions. Bailey Majors takes a look at the individuals who impart most of that important information. During impact orientation, current Troy University students serve as leaders to incoming freshmen and transfer students. The impact leaders help the students get better acquainted with Troy University and offer helpful advice and guidance to their groups. We've been doing so much with the students. They come in, they learn about how to get their schedule, they learn about all Troy things possible, organizations, um, learning communities, honors program. We get to meet pretty much every incoming freshman as they're coming through and we get to help them make their schedules, learn about Troy, learn their way around campus. Before IMPACT started, the leaders went through training and learned leadership skills and team building exercises. The IMPACT leaders say they have enjoyed being able to be involved with new students and each other. It has been phenomenal being able to meet all of the incoming freshmen, being able to show them how much I love Troy. Everyone is used to leading and taking charge, but sometimes we have to like down ourselves and listen to others. Fourteen completely different people with different leadership styles that all work together really well and we just have a good time. During the impact sessions, leaders take their students to browse sessions and encourage them to get involved with university activities. And the impact students say they find their leader's advice helpful. Having an impact leader that's closer to my age really helps because they're going through it right now and they can give us some advice and some insight to what's going on. I to get them as much in their head about getting involved, make sure you want to do something around campus because you don't want to just sit at home or in your dorm and just not do nothing. It's boring. And what do the impact leaders say they want their students to take away from their orientation at Troy University? I would love for them just to take away the excitement of impact and bring it with them in the fall to Troy because, like we tell them, it's what you make of it. I want them to love Troy and just be a part of the family and make sure they just come here and get a good education. Like, make sure they know everything they need to know about Troy. Bailey Majors, Troy Trojan Vision News. Impact wraps up July 24th. Fall semester starts August 15th. 
And now taking a look, look at news from around the state in Birmingham, federal prosecutors and Citizen Trust Bank have reached an agreement for the bank to foreclose on the Jefferson County home of former Senator E.B. McLean, who's in federal prison for taking bribes. The U.S. Attorney Office agreed to stop its efforts to seize the house as part of McLean's criminal case. McLean has served almost two years of a nearly six-year sentence. And in Huntsville, a, mo a mother says in a lawsuit that a funeral home failed to embalm her son's body. WAAY TV reports that Norma Holman died at Huntsville Hospital on May 28th due to complications from a blood clot. His mother claims in the lawsuit that Nelm's memorial funeral home was supposed to arrange including the embalming, but never completed it. And also in Birmingham, former Uni University of Alabama and NFL linebacker Salim Rashid is due in federal court for sentencing after pleading guilty to felony charges. The one-time San Francisco 49er pleaded guilty in March to federal charges of food stamp fraud and falsely claiming a woman as his wife on immigration forms. Separately, he's charged with engaging in sex acts with two students while teaching at Woodlawn High School in Birmingham. The former player is being held without bond. Still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly News, the Major League All-Star Game was going on last night. Dustin Carroll will be in with details in sports. But first, presidential candidate Mitt Romney talks at a convention to reach out to black voters. We'll have that story and more coming up. Mitt Romney courts black voters. I'm Danielle Nottingham. Coming up, why he says he's the better choice for president. minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. There's a lot more to, to somebody being successful in, in society than just their diploma. We're in the business of making well-rounded individuals. They taught me so much more than skills. At Troy, they truly believe that one person can make a difference. We want to educate the mind to think, the heart to feel, the body to act. We're not trying to be all things to all people, but what we do, we do very well. Troy University. In class. Online. Within reach. Troy.edu. From the high-definition digital production studios of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now for a look at what's happening across the nation and around the world, we'll, get, we'll go to Brittany Harris at the Global News Desk. Brittany. Thank you, Deatra. Presidential candidates usually talk at rallies filled with supporters, but that's not the case for Mitt Romney today. He is speaking at the annual NAACP convention. Most members of the civil rights group are supporting President Obama, but the likely Republican nominee is making his case for what they should reconsider their vote. Daniel Nottingham reports from Washington. Mitt Romney took the stage at the NAACP's annual meeting in Houston, Texas, with a message for black voters. If you want a president who will make things better in the African-American community, you are looking at him. About 90 percent of black voters are expected to support President Obama in November. But Romney says that support has not led to results. He points out that while the U.S. unemployment rate is just over 8 percent, among blacks it's much higher, 14.4 percent. The unemployment rate, the duration of unemployment, average income, median family wealth are all worse in the black community. Romney believes staying focused on the economy can help him win in November, and polls show the race is tightening. A new Quinnipiac University survey of voters nationwide shows Romney just three points behind, 46 to 43 percent. <laughs> President Obama has been working to lock in his support in the battleground states. The stakes in this election could not be bigger. He traveled to Iowa on Tuesday, trying to reignite the enthusiasm that led him to victory four years ago. I'm betting that you are going to be as fired up as you were in 2008 because you understand the stakes. The president is trying to convince voters he is the candidate who can turn the economy around and defend the middle class. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Washington. 
Diplomatic efforts are doing little to end the unrest in Syria, and now the UN is up against a deadline involving hundreds of monitors, including Syria. Inez Ferre has the latest from the United States. Rebels attack a government tank convoy in the latest video posted online from Syria. The battles are raging while a new diplomatic push is underway to end the bloody crisis. United Nations Special Envoy Kofi Annan told the UN Security Council Wednesday that both sides need to know there will be consequences if they don't agree to an immediate ceasefire. I was urging all governments to work together, to work together to press the parties and to support the one mediation effort so that we can succeed in the goal we all share. Anan wants Iran to have a role in negotiations. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has close ties to Tehran, and Anan hopes Iran will help relaunch peace talks. But the U.S. and other Western states don't want Iran involved. The U.N.'s 15-member Security Council must decide what to do with U.N. observers in Syria before their mandate expires on July 20th. 300 monitors are in Syria to observe a ceasefire Anan brokered in April, but rebels and Syrian forces ignored the truce and monitors were even attacked. There was one hopeful sign Wednesday. Syria released 275 prisoners, which is a key part of Anan's original peace plan. Ines Ferre for CBS News, the United Nations. A new study finds women who drink a moderate amount of alcohol can help prevent bone loss, lowering the risk of osteoporosis. Teresa Garcia has the story from Los Angeles. Women who want to prevent osteoporosis may want to raise their glass. A new study says drinking a moderate amount of alcohol may help prevent bone loss. It's better than medicine, which has bad side effects. Researchers at Oregon State University studied postmenopausal women who regularly had one or two drinks a day. They found when the women stopped drinking for two weeks, their rates of bone turnover, when bone is lost and replaced, went up. Based on this study, alcohol reduces bone loss by uh, reducing this turnover that is elevated following menopause. The body constantly removes and replaces bone. With osteoporosis, more bone is lost than reformed, resulting in weak bones that are more likely to break. About 10 million Americans have osteoporosis. Older women are more affected because estrogen, the hormone that keeps bone replacement in check, decreases after menopause. Women like 83-year-old Sandra Crane welcome the study's findings. My friends my age and they have osteoporosis. It's very common. And uh, we can all use a little bit, bit more wine. Why not? But researchers warn not to drink too much. Excessive uh, alcohol consumption is detrimental to bone health. But in this moderate range, it appears to be beneficial. And they say eating a healthy diet and exercising will also go a long way to keeping bones healthy. Teresa Garcia, CBS News, Los Angeles. And that